All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, I'm trying to answer the question of, is a Synology NAS or is a true NAS better for you or your business? And really, like a lot of things in life, it depends exactly on who you are and what you do and how comfortable you are with managing solutions like this. So both Synology and TrueNAS pretty much do the exact same thing. They create an operating system that is accessible over the internet from a web portal that allows you to control everything from this web portal that allows you to set up network storage for whatever your needs are. They also both allow you to run virtual machines and a bunch of other features like that and can kind of host your own services on there. The Synologies all come pre-built. You can run Xpology, but realistically, if you want to do that, I would just recommend running a different service because you're going to have a lot of trouble with it. And TrueNAS has both options. You can either build your own TrueNAS server like I've got here, or you can actually go ahead and buy a TrueNAS certified box from iX Systems. And so in a lot of ways, they're very similar, but in reality, they're actually quite different. And so in reality, this question comes down to what you need this for and how comfortable you are with your own setup. So Synology has an unbelievable, incredibly easy to use package that you just buy, stick in hard drives, hit go, and it really does everything for you. It is incredibly easy to set up and honestly, just from YouTube tutorials, you can set up everything you need and you're really not gonna have any issues. TrueNAS on the other hand is a lot more complicated. Fundamentally, you can get it set up quite quickly, but it is not going to be the incredible ease of use of Synology. Synology has designed their operating system to be incredibly user-friendly, and it shows. TrueNAS, on the other hand, is just not as easy to set up and manage. It's pretty decent, and they've gotten better over the years, but it is not as intuitive as it is for Synology DSM. Then again, really Synology DSM is probably the best not NAS operating system out there for just regular home users who don't know a ton, in my opinion. But if you're an IT guy and you really know this stuff, you can easily manage this and you can do everything from a web portal and you're going to get great performance out of either one of these systems. So the advantage of TrueNAS in a lot of ways is it allows you to bring your own hardware and it's based off of ZFS. So TrueNAS runs ZFS, Synology runs either ext4 or btrfs. If you're a Synology user and you have the option to run btrfs, most of the applications are for btrfs. I would really recommend setting that up. And zfs and btrfs actually give you very similar features. They're both copy on write file systems that allow you to have snapshots, rollbacks, and protection like that. They also allow you to easily send snapshots, and so you can easily back up like that and just have a ton of history for your files without taking out much storage at all. Now, ZFS is designed to scale way more than a Synology ever could. ZFS can easily be happy having four or five petabytes in a single volume. All you need is enough RAM. You can just keep adding in more and more disk shelves and more VDEVs into a storage pool, and you can just grow that thing to immense proportion. Synology, even their highest end units, cap out at only 200 terabytes for a single volume. So if you need massive scale out, you're gonna to wanna to go ZFS, you're gonna to wanna to go TrueNAS because that's just what it's capable of doing. And that's really what the file system is designed behind. Now, a lot of people probably don't have 200 terabytes, but even for a unit like this, which is the DS1621 plus, it caps out at 108 terabytes, which actually is a limitation on the eight bay units because if you fill that with 16 terabyte drives, you're pretty much there. Now let's talk about kind of overall price. So Synologies are not cheap. They actually don't have insanely fast hardware. No, this really doesn't matter unless you're running a lot of virtual machines because they can easily saturate a 10 gig connection, but you need to pay for higher end units to have that ability to even upgrade to 10 gigabit. If you use TrueNAS and build your own system, you can just throw in hard drives into any old computer you've got lying around and it'll pretty much work. And so you can add in your own stuff and it's very cheap in that sense. But then again, you've got to control it. You've got to be the one who manages it and make sure you know what you're doing. So in that case, it really comes down to who you are. If you're comfortable building your own PC and setting this all up yourself, and you really want a unit that's really mostly focused on being a file server, and maybe you run a virtual machine that you don't care about too much, ZFS and TrueNAS is a pretty great option because it gives you that flexibility to set up however you'd like to. Now, if you just want a pre-built solution, I really would not recommend getting those true NAS boxes because in my opinion, Synology just has a much better offering 
at a very similar price. Now it is going to be more expensive because you are limited to more expensive units for that 10 gig connection, which a lot of people probably want. But just out of the box, these are really low power draw. They're very quiet and they're very easy to set up and run. And they have been great units for me. I really like them and I would recommend them to just about anybody. Now, if you're in office that's running a video production house and you need to be able to have 15 editors hitting it at the exact same time, I really would probably want to go upgrade to TrueNAS as it's just going to handle all of that a lot better because of ZFS's incredibly efficient caching algorithms. Because if you just keep throwing RAM at it, you can keep so much more of the important data that's needed in RAM. Synologies get capped out at RAM quite quickly and they're just not going to be able to handle as many simultaneous connections to it as ZFS will be able to with TrueNAS. TrueNAS is really designed for enterprise users who need a ton of storage and have dedicated network guys. And so if you have those kind of requirements, TrueNAS is a great way to go. You probably want to build your own system and be able to throw in like 128 gigs of RAM in there. And so that way everything's cached for everybody and you'll just have a much better experience. Now, if you're a video production house where you've maybe got five or 10 editors and they're not all on at the exact same time, getting a unit like this can actually be awesome. And so if you get a unit like this set up as a RAID 5 array and throw six 16 terabyte drives in here, you'll have 80 terabytes of usable storage. Then you throw two M.2 NVMe SSDs in here, and now all of your video editors will be able to hit this thing and get files off of it as if they're editing from a local SSD, which is always shared storage. But they do end up getting capped out. These use not as efficient caching algorithms. This uses what's called the least recently used caching algorithm. That means that every time data is added into the cache, which is first on RAM, and then if you upgrade to an NVMe SSD cache, then stored on the NVMe SSD. Every time that the data is added in there, it kicks out the least recently used thing. So it kicks out whatever was least recently used. Now, the problem with that is, if you do a backup where it scans the entire file system, all of a sudden the entire cache is completely useless and you just end up throwing out stuff and putting stuff in RAM in the cache that will never be used. ZFS, on the other hand, has an incredibly intelligent caching algorithm, which is really why it's used so much in enterprise. So ZFS, instead of just basing off what's been least recently used and kicking that out, it actually kicks stuff out and remembers that every time it kicks it out, it makes it harder to kick out the next time. And so that means if you kick something out and then have to put it right back into the cache, it's not going to get kicked out as easily the next time. And so what that means is the files that you're actually using most are going to stay in there even if you do something like a backup. And so for stuff like that, you're just going to get a much better caching algorithm for massive video production houses that need a ton of simultaneous connections. All right, and so now let's talk about add-on features. Things like being able to run a database directly on it. Things like being able to set this up as a security station. Things like being able to just add on those ones and twosy things that allow you to really use it more integrated into your office or home use. And so in this case, Synology DSM is just going to win without a single question. Synology DSM has one of the best backing up applications. Hyper Backup allows you to backup incredibly easily and really understand what's going on and restore files incredibly easily. It has Surveillance Station, which is an awesome app that allows you to have security cameras into your Synology. Note, extra licenses for those do cost money. It also has Synology Drive, which is an awesome syncing application that allows you to sync different file systems from your computer to your Synology. So if you update it on the road, you can immediately have changes come back to your home NAS. If you want to be able to send photos to people and use Photo Station, all these things are built into Synology DSM and work great. A lot of these things you can add in as add-on packages into TrueNAS, but they're not going to be as good, they're not going to be as polished, and you're just going to be much more limited on what you can do. Fundamentally, Synologies are built around a NAS is not just a file server, but also a whole home server. And so that's why if you're looking for those things, especially for home users who want to be able to do all these extra things on there, I would really recommend the Synology. Now, if you are just focused on this is a file server and I need to be able to go really fast and upgrade as needed, TrueNAS is just going to be better for you. 
assuming you have the IT department who can set it up and make sure everything's always working. And if needed, debug stuff. Uh, let's talk about updates. Basically, when FreeNAS upgraded from 11 to 12, it renamed from FreeNAS to TrueNAS. And so now we have TrueNAS. That upgrade broke the server for me. I got absolutely terrible performance out of it for write speeds. And the first two updates did not fix it. Finally, now they fixed it. But from that first upgrade, I actually had to downgrade because it absolutely killed my network performance on this thing for write speeds. My read speeds were totally fine. Then I would try to write and where I could have written at 700 megabytes per second on FreeNAS 11. Now when I'm trying to do that exact same write with just the update, I am now getting less than 30 megabytes per second write because the kernel just freaked out. And so that's the thing. This is a open source solution. They're not testing it on every single combination of hardware out there because they just can't. Synology on the other hand, can test it on every single combination of hardware out there because there's a very finite number of hardware that you can add into this thing. They have the Synology cards and also some Synology approved cards that have been tested and worked. And so those you know will work because they have tested it. Synology is not going to push out an update that's going to absolutely brick this system. Now with TrueNAS, it depends on exactly your system. And so that's just one thing. You probably want somebody who knows what they're doing and knows how to test these things before really putting yourself in the situation where you're counting on this thing. And then you have one bad update that really removes a ton of performance that you needed. And so that's just one thing to think about. For me, it wasn't too big of a deal. I was able to downgrade. It took a little while, but I was back in business. Now, if this is an office who doesn't necessarily have a great IT guy, that could take hours that could absolutely kill performance for a few weeks while you're trying to sort out what happened. So at the end of the day, the choice between these two systems really depends on what you're trying to do and how comfortable you are with technology. If you know what you're doing with a lot of computing systems and you're comfortable tinkering around when you need to, both of these options are going to be great solutions for you. But if you're looking for just a really small package that works really well and you're not going to have to mess with it, and you want to be able to add in like photos and easily backup and everything like that, Synology is great. If you want to be able to tinker and build your own and have amazing performance if you need it, honestly, TrueNAS is going to be awesome. There's a lot of stuff you can do and you can just keep tinkering and upgrading and adding your own components in really easily. So really that's all there is to it. It really just depends on who you are and how comfortable you are with technology and what your use cases are. All right, well, that's going to be it for this overview. Go ahead and leave in there tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.